Good evening. Welcome again to the World Game and our coverage of Match 2 in the Olyroo Challenge Series between Australia and Brazil. Last Saturday, on a stirring night at Parramatta Stadium, attended by a crowd of 20,000, the Aussies downed the Brazilians two goals to one. It was a game filled with thrills, but with much frustration for the Brazilians, who are eager to level the series at the Hindmarsh Stadium in Adelaide tonight. With me in the studio are Wollongong Wolves coach Nick Theodorakopoulos and Brisbane striker Andy Harper. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Great to see you. Before we discuss the prospects of the game with the boys, let's cross to the Hindmarsh for the latest pre-match news and Carl Patterson. Carl? Thanks, Les. Welcome, everyone, to the Hindmarsh Stadium in Adelaide, where it's a rather chilly, if you like, 18 degrees. I say chilly after the balmy conditions that the Olyroo Challenge kicked off in on Saturday night at the Parramatta Stadium in Sydney. Very good conditions for playing football tonight. Unfortunately, the crowd just taking its time to build up, only possibly uh, one-third full at the moment, the Hindmarsh Stadium, and I uh, hope people get along. It will be a fantastic game. Plenty of news happening with the team lineups, and joining me to discuss those is Ayrton Andrioli, a man well known to audiences of the Ericsson Cup. Ayrton, welcome. Obviously, you are uh, Brazilian by birth, now married to an Adelaide girl, so you've got a foot in each camp tonight. Yeah, we can put it that way, yeah. Um, but it was really nice to catch up with the Brazilian players, and I'm really enjoying this time we have here. Hopefully, we'll have a good game tonight. Let's talk about the Brazilian lineup. The coach, Toninho Barroso, has named an unchanged lineup, but the, there were, we believe, injury doubts for Heriberto and Rodrigo. Yeah, exactly. Both of them didn't train yesterday, you know, but according to uh, the doctor today, the last examination, and both of them are okay, so they, they're on the field. Yeah. We know the Brazilians suffered badly from jet lag. Do they feel more rested now? Yeah, looking, you know, from what I see from Sunday to today, the team is looking more relaxed and, of course, you know, check lag is one thing that's part of the fast day thing, so, and uh, hopefully the team will perform better tonight. Now, I believe in his final address to the players just a few moments ago, Toninho Barroso, the coach, asked them to maybe match the Australians in physical commitment tonight. Well, the thing is that, uh, as you know, as we all know, Brazilians, they, you know, really skillful players, but if you don't have the legs, you know, to cope with that physical side of the game, you have to, and uh, that was one problem in the first game, of course, because of the long trip that they had, but hopefully, as we said before, the team is feeling better today, and they will be able to match up with the physical side of the game as well. Now, obviously, the uh, Brazilians were maybe caught by surprise a little by the Australians on Saturday night. Yeah, exactly. They were telling me after the game that the Australian team started the game at 100 miles and now they finished at 150, which they were quite surprised with that. And on the other hand, the Brazilian team was a little bit flat, but not excuses, you know, the court wasn't happy with the performance and he believes that the team can do much better tonight. Ayrton Andrioli, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the game. Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, that's Ayrton Andrioli, the liaison officer for the Brazilian team here in Adelaide. Of course, Brazil with an unchanged lineup from the Parramatta Stadium. For Australia, the, the news is, Les, one change. Archie Thompson comes into the starting lineup in place of 16-year-old Nick Carley. So just the one change for Australia. The Australians trained twice here in Adelaide. They're feeling quite good. The Brazilians only the one, so I still think they're maybe not feeling as fresh as they'd like to be and maybe looking ahead to the, the game tonight. They really have to lift their work rate. I'll be back at halftime with all the news and crosses during the game. For now, Les, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Carl, and we'll be back at the Highmark Stadium in a few moments. Uh, Nick, uh, you were with us, of course, on Saturday night in that uh, stirring occasion that that was, um, and Australians deserved winners two goals to one. Uh, one change, um, Archie Thompson coming in for Nick Carley. What do you think? Obviously, uh, for the people that went out to Parramatta Stadium on Saturday night, I'm sure a lot of them walked away wanting to, to see the second match, uh, if it could be, at Parramatta Stadium. I think Archie Thompson, Liz, is a player that um, a lot of viewers will be surprised they obviously haven't seen a lot of Archie Thompson, but um, you'll find that Archie Thompson will be more than a capable replacement for Nick Carley. In saying that, I think Nick Carl, being 16, did a splendid job the other night, and I'm sure Al Blanca will give him more chances in the future as well. Andy, what do you think? It's, uh, it's, it, it doesn't look like a defensive move, move to me. Uh, Thompson is a very creative striker. Um, so obviously Raul is not um, expecting to sit back, even though he would expect the Brazilians to come uh, much harder tonight. Yeah, it, it brings up a couple of points. Firstly, Archie has been brought off the bench uh, by Frank Carrock in the Ericsson Cup to great effect. He's been a tremendous impact player, so it will be interesting to see how he goes with a start-up position. Uh, the other thing is, of course, as you alluded to, is the fact that the last time Australia had the temerity to hold Brazil to any sort of result in the Confederations Cup, they promptly came out and spanked our backside. So uh, certainly Ra will have the boys all primed up and, and Brazil will be... Uh, 
uh, sitting on the edge of their seats, champing at the bit, as it were, to get their revenge back at the Australians. And, and I'm very excited at the prospect, the football prospect that's coming up later. Well, we were, we were very excited, uh, Nick and I, certainly on Saturday night, at some of what we saw uh, by some of the Australian players. Uh, Nick Rizzo, for example, uh, was, a, was a terrific revelation for us. What did you think? Yeah, he's uh, unfortunately another one of these youngsters who's gotten out of Australia before we've had a chance to, to witness him and, and, uh, and see him in, in live action. It's great to have him back. Look, he was dynamic, I thought, in midfield, and, and the hard graft of weekly English football has served him well, I think, in his preparation. And, uh, if we get another two or three like him, things are looking good for our Olympic challenge. All right, Andy, Nick, thank you. We'll catch, catch up with you at half-time. Let's go now to the national anthems at the Hindmarsh, and then our commentators are David Bashir and Johnny Warren. of history here at Highmarsh Stadium uh, with its 2-1 victory over Brazil in game one Australia added another dimension to its good results at international level tonight it's a rare opportunity for Australia to win a series against a world-class nation the pre-match injury concerns over midfield dynamo Nick Rizzo were doused when he passed the fitness test last night the only change is up front where Archie Thompson replaces 16 year old Nick Carley the Oliru midfield of Damianos, Grella and Rizzo will again be a key factor to Australia's chances. And Brazil has also nursed some sore spots from Saturday night's match. Goal scorer Alberto satisfied officials he was fit to play after a knee injury scare. Coach Barroso has promised 
a more lively performance from a team which includes five players from the under 17 world cup players to look out for a captain and sweeper for Usham, gustavo and uh, the striker marco antonio the number nine fernando was also the key playmaker in midfield the number 10. so the atmosphere is good here at Highmarsh stadium the crowd perhaps a little down but uh, building up now and John Warren all's in readiness for what promises to be a very entertaining contest given the fact that now Brazil have acclimatized and uh, they should be a lot better for the run well if it's half as good a game as we saw in Sydney the other night, I think we'd all be delighted it was uh, a fabulous affair of course uh, Australia in outstanding touch we do expect uh, Brazil to be in much better form this evening i mean their chances really revolve around the performance of the number five and captain he is the man who sets the pace and the tempo and dictates play wasn't in the game at all in sydney the number 10 uh, fernando and also the number 11 matuzalem and all those boys were down in the game in uh, sydney but that is to deny what australia what was a fine performance from australia but a nice uh, weather for football an uh, excellent surface here at hindmarsh as always and uh, one just senses we're in for another very very entertaining encounter between these two countries the experienced eugene brazali in charge of tonight's second match in this Oliru challenge and there's archie thompson who's coming back from shin soreness he was a late withdrawal from that match in sydney and he'd be looking to really impress selectors long term the first half underway and it's Australia in their traditional green and gold, Brazil in their away strip. As per the opening match, and uh, Simon Colosimo combined so well with Rafael Bove in that game one, he was a real star. Colosimo on the ball now, as was this man, Vince Grellup. Australia would be looking to maintain the pressure. They really did harass Brazil in midfield the other night. Fred Emerton was uh, spectacular with his speed and strength the Oliru captain is the big striker Clayton Zane and a foul early on the Brazilian number six Gustavo just an awkward challenge there almost akin to a rugby tackle in the end by Clayton Zane so a set piece for the Brazilians and this is Mutsuz Alam as he crosses the ball in long but the number three was well covered in Fernando Santos Fernando who traditionally the chief playmaker in any South American team wears the number 10 and that's a big honor Fernando has to carry that tonight he was a little bit quiet in the opening game but uh, he was one of the players team officials were confident would perform a lot better in this high mush stadium encounter there's the captain for Wisham. and going down there was jacob burns the sydney united wide player who plays on the left, Emerton on the right. So it certainly was a physical encounter and the word from the room before the match was Brazil would take it right up to Australia in that department. They were very surprised at the intensity of the Oli Roos in game one. And I think a little surprised at the skill level as well. Here's Rizzo. Fernando. And well closed down there by Colosimo, who was all class the other night, John. Yes, and indications again, that's the class type of tackle that he put in there, just without a very clean challenge, uh, able to read where the Brazilian attacker was going, which takes some doing sometimes because of their, their swerve and the skill level. But uh, Colosimo, first class challenge there. Damianos and Grella, both Melbourne boys. Damianos with South Melbourne, Grella with Calvin in their first season. Clayton Zane overran it, and a chance there for Damianos to get a touch across to Grella, who was free. 
a loose ball and Marco Antonio who's got big wraps up front nice dribble but uh, dispossessed well by Grella who does so much good work in his own half Archie Thompson taken down and that was a foul by Philippe Alvim the number two for Brazil in fact for Ujim Philippe Alvim had the final tackle Colosimo and the scouts have already been uh, out for this young defender. He certainly has a bright future. Zane provided uh, a lot of bulk and strength up front and really worried the Brazilian defence. Quick switch of play and Emerson who wreaked havoc down his flank. Can he continue with that form? Pushing forward now. Good body work there by Grello just improvised the situation. And this may be a yellow card produced on Alberto, who had a similar fate in the game one in the second half, the goal scorer. You can see here on replay, just off the ball there, John, and uh, a good call by the referee. Yes, uh, Eugene Brazali been been very kind so far, very lenient. There's been a lot of uh, physical contact, but it, the time came to pull out the yellow to say, well, that's uh, enough of that. That's where this all stops. Well, a deep ball to the back post and uh, some tall timber with Blatzis and also Clayton Zane. Well, this is a test for Brazil. Uh, they fell down very badly at dead ball situations in the first match. Both goals coming from them. Clayton Zane caused a lot of problems. Let's just see how they handle this first corner from Australia. And Con Blatzis has gone down off the ball and this may be a red card offence. Yes, a red card, and he is off. Well, that was off the ball, and the referee was right on the spot. Tom Blatz has went down at the near post, and the Brazilians are all at sea at that decision. Eugene Brazali was emphatic. He saw the contact. Archie Thompson is involved and the Australians will be well advised just to stay out of the scrimmage. The red card's been given and Eliberto moves away from the scene. Well, he came into the match with an injury scare and is ejected inside six minutes. So the goal scorer from the opening game had an early yellow and a second yellow on Comblatsis and uh, I just noticed in Sydney the other night, John, there was no love loss between those two players and certainly the needle was taking its toll. We can see here just before the corner was taken and there the contact was made and it was quite clear how severe it was. Well, that's a matter of interpretation but... Uh, the fact remains that Alberto is off and Brazil is down to 10 men, which is a, a crucial point in the uh, context well, of this match. It's a hoax, Adelaide, isn't it? It's, I remember the Japan game. We had Australia-Japan Socceroos against them here. We had the, the send-off of uh, Diamichis, which does take a lot away from the game. It's going to be very difficult now for Brazil. And here in the first five minutes again, Brazil reduced to 10 men. Marco Antonio free down the left, but uh, closed down expertly by Colosimo. You'll remember, remember, David, after that game, Terry Venables very critical of the referee. It was a send-off offence. It's a deliberate handball on the line. Uh, Venables and many people arguing, well, it is a friendly international. Why uh, destroy it, if you like? Uh, and the same argument could be put up now, although it is, uh, from what we saw there, it was an elbow to uh, Blatzis. It is, of course, a send-off offence. And uh, it does now put uh, Brazil under enormous pressure to try and win this match with only 10 men. Archie Thompson. Irizzo. Lovely ball in for Bove, who's free. And another player free, but uh, interception from Matuzalem, the number 11 for Brazil. Emerton was nearly released down that right flank. Matuzalem has lovely skills. And uh, this releases a teammate in Gustavo an attractive ball in behind the defence 
for Ferrugian, the captain. And there certainly is some needle, but uh, I suppose reflecting on that incident, John, when you've got a player that's already been yellow carded so early in the match, he really has to keep well, the slates uh, free. Well, exactly. I mean, that's uh, the, the, you. You have to defend the referee. It was the correct decision. Just on Brazil now, they, they it's a real test for them. They did win, in fact, the Under-17 World Cup when they beat their arch rival Ghana in the final. They did come from behind and with 10 men. So this is a real challenge for them now to get something out of this match and get this series alive. Burns short searching there for Rizzo. And uh, well, that was very crude and unnecessary from Fernando Santos. Just uh, lashed out there at Rizzo right in front of the referee. So Well, that is a yellow. I'm sorry, but that is a yellow. I know it's not a yellow or red. Well, I know they've won fair play awards, but that certainly wasn't the smart play of 1998. Well, it's correct. And very generous just to get a yellow. I think it was Fernando Santos had that uh, foul on Rizzo the other evening when he broke through on the left. But a sign that uh, Brazil certainly disturbed. So a set piece, two-man wall and some tall timber for Australia. Rizzo can get some dip and loop on the ball. Takes a deflection in the penalty box and the clearance away from the captain. Here's a chance for Emerson to, to start to make contact with the header. Here's Fabio, the goalkeeper. He's got enormous wraps in Brazil, but uh, he certainly will be tested with the Brazilians down to 10 men. And a substitute early as well. So nothing really yet. going right. Rocha on the park for the big striker. Well, a normal, Claudio. a normal tactic. This will be a forward off and a midfielder on. So this international, only 10 minutes old, but already there's been high drama at Heimar Stadium with Alberto off the park with two yellow cards and Grella on that occasion gave away the foul Vince Grella very smooth in his delivery and does some good defensive work but uh, clearly fouled Fernando on that occasion there's the Brazilian bench Fernando drives the ball in and a chance here. Goal for Brazil. The number nine has scored. Marco Antonio against the run of play. The rebound helped the Brazilians, but Marco Antonio had the class to slot the ball away at the near post. Danny Milosevic just helped it into the back of his own net. And the Brazilians are up after 11 minutes of play. We can see the dead ball situation. Matusalem left it for Fernando. And it just took a deflection. Gustavo helped it on for Marco Antonio, who slotted the ball away. He's had enormous wraps, the striker, who was substituted in the second half of game one. And Milosevic covered his near post, but not quite well enough. Well, Australia will be stung by that 11th minute goal from Marco Antonio. Here's Australia marching forward. Clayton Zane, long range shot. But uh, Fabio had that well covered, and uh, Carl Patterson has some information on the sidelines. Thanks, David. Obviously, plenty happening down here. First of all, the Brazilians have made that uh, reorganisation a forward off for a midfielder. They're going to play just the one up and uh, try and hold the ball. The other news for uh, those people at home in might thought uh, Con Blatzis was uh, acting. He has a nice gash in his lip, so it was a, uh, a good whack with the elbow there he took from Eriberto, and uh, he's been patched up. But obviously, it was uh, a genuine bit of a violent play. Back to you, David. Damianos and Rizzo attempted the volley, but it was cut off there by the number two, Felipe Alvim. So Comblatsis 
the walking wounded at the moment. And you'd have to say against the run with uh, some unsettling times, Brazil has made this match extremely interesting. A corner to Australia. Damianos low, and the header was up from Gustavo Well. Lovely back heel from Rizzo. Chance here for Edmonton. Inside a penalty box. And straight at the goalkeeper. Well, he was outstanding in game one and certainly poses one of the big attacking threats for Brazil. The deflect here assists uh, Fabio, the goalkeeper. Edmonton trying to place it. I believe it does get a touch and comes back. Yes, comes back to the keeper. So a free kick situation here for Australia. And there's a lot of chat out there to referee Eugene Brazali. <laughs> it's an interpretation by Matusalem. I'm just hoping Eugene sees the funnier side of that. I'm sure he will. And Fabio. Very important he organises the wall. Australia have been very good from the dead ball situation. a four-man Brazilian wall and Grella, Rizzo and Emerton. Emerton just takes a deflection and uh, cannons into the second man in the wall still alive here for Australia but a poor ball there by Burns and a chance here for the Brazilians to build the goal scorer Marco Antonio surrounded by three yellow shirts one being Rizzo who's crunched in the tackle there by Fernando that stood his ground and the Australians, as is their tradition, have really stood up and been counted. And this has uh, made the game very interesting, that goal by Marco Antonio. So often you see a play going off and the side down to 10 men score. Maybe it's a psychological thing. I'm sure coaches, uh, John Warren, don't quite know what that is. No, well, the formation has to be changed for Australia. You don't uh, stay with two markers at the back when they're only playing one, one in front. That, I believe, has to be changed. Either Colosimo pushes into midfield, Blacksus becomes the sole marker. If we look at Australia defending now, you'll see where we're not making use of the man advantage. We've got three players at the back, Bove, Colosimo, and uh, Blacksus marking one player. If, uh, further up the field and this you'll see it perhaps as the ball comes through only Marco Antonio in front and there you'll see the three players marking now Australia have to push one of those into midfield or take one of those players off and bring on a midfield player and that's why we're not capitalizing on our one-man advantage at the moment because we're losing it with two two free players at the back Damianos and Emerton streaming down the right still going Brett Everton this is promising for Australia the ball pulled back. Fabio with a brilliant save. Tipped it wide. Grella. And Burns to the back post. Emerton again. A full stretch with the volley. As we cross to Kyle Patterson, there's a lot of happenings on the field. Yeah, thanks, David. Just to pick up on Johnny Warren's point, the instruction now has gone out to the Australians to reorganise. We'll see Raphael Bove pushing into midfield. Simon Colosimo will act as the sweeper. Com Blattis will be the sole marker, if you like. On Marco Antonio, so uh, the Australian bench has picked up on that, and hopefully we'll be able to push our numerical advantage with that reorganisation. Back to you, David. Thanks, Carl Matuzalov, the playmaker, a long searching ball, but uh, poorly directed. Just on that point, 10 against 11, we see it uh, even in the World Cup, where 10 out play 11. Uh, one, the, the 10 pick the game up. The 11, uh, on the other hand, tend to think, well, this is we're only up against 10 now. Everybody takes the foot off the pedal a little bit. Uh, but the biggest problem is that teams keep playing the same way. And it's good to see that Australia have changed that formation because uh, with Bove now pushing into midfield, it does give you that extra man advantage. The other thing that Australia has to do is play wide, not through the middle, stretch them wide. Clayton Zane, centering ball and uh, awkward effort in defending there by Fernando Santos. A quarter given, much to the disgust of the Brazilian number three. And this is where Emerton scored in that first game from a free header. 
So obviously the Brazilians feel a little bit exposed in that situation, either from the dead ball or the corner. Ritzel, the Liverpool youngster, curling ball to the back post. And Emerson has Rella free in the centre. The outstanding captain tries to get around two players, one being Rocha, the substitute, Rella. So some space to work in. And Zane, will Demiano shoot from long range? He does. And nearly scores. He brought a brilliant save from Fabio down to his right. Great shot, but what a fabulous save. That's the reason Fabio is rated so highly. Under 17 World Cup winner, only two goals against him, but his two saves, one the cross from Emerton earlier, and that save show why he's so highly regarded. So Australia beginning to really pressurise the Brazilian defence. Their fifth quarter now. Damianos. Deep one in. Clayton Zane attempts the centering header. It was uh, had too much dip and angle for the big striker. Brazil coping much better with the Australian aerial threat than they did the other evening where they were all over the place. Obviously, they've put a lot of work into it in their training session since. But much better organisation. Getting uh, the important thing in defending at those situations is to get a ch at least get a challenge in. Cardinal Sin to uh, ball watch. Cardinal Sin not to get that challenge in. Here's Thompson. One out speedster and Damianos again from long range. It takes the deflection and yep. the power was taken off that shot. That was a great tackle by Fernando Santos. He plays with uh, the Flamengo club in Rio. That is the club of Romario. So you'd imagine uh, play, training games against Romario every week. You'd have to be able to defend a bit. And he showed there just uh, how, how well he read the dribble of Thompson and won the ball cleanly. The tools are on. Gets past Damianos, now has to take on the number three for Australia in Simon Colosimo, who was fouled quite clearly, but uh, he showed a great deal of courage. And a left shoulder, or perhaps a whack around the neck area. You can see here on replay, well, that was just impetuous to say the least from the Tuzalem. Leapt into the air and into the facial region of Simon Colosimo, who was so important for Australia in the opening game and uh, that could spell the end of the match for Colosimo he looks in very poor order the outstanding Carlton defender and he plays in the true tradition of Australian defenders job I thought well it looked a lot worse than it was I felt the Matuzalem I felt was just trying to jump to get away from the tackle, a little bit of self-protection there. Unfortunate injury there's Colosimo in and then jumps into the the jumping Matuzalem. I, I don't think the intent was uh, was there from either party. And let's hope Simon's okay. But he's uh, I mean what he showed the other one not shows in the Ericsson Cup each week and shows uh, showed in the game last Saturday, the modern defender, not just defending cleanly and intercepting reading of the games but his distribution and attackers uh, defenders I should say nowadays have to be all-round players you have to be able to win the ball and contribute in attack and distribute the ball properly and Colosimo uh, epitomizes that type of player here's Jacob Burns down the left takes on one Alvim and the return ball that uh, Brazil defend resolutely and it's out of play. Carl Patterson on the sidelines. Yeah, Dave, just a quick report on Simon Colosimo. He'll come back into the play. Looks like he's OK. Just to confirm, on the disciplinary front, Eriberto, of course, with that red card, will now miss automatically the last game in Perth. He'll be suspended. And I'm told also any player who collects two yellow cards in the series will be suspended for the Perth game. So there are a number of Australians, including uh, Nick Rizzo, of course, who have a yellow from the first game. So obviously something to think about there for the, the players. Two yellows in the series means they missed the game. Back to you, David. Thanks, Carl. There's Fabio, who's also, well, not also, but he's moving to Flamenco, one of the uh, premier clubs in Brazil. And one of five Brazilians in this team who played in the successful 
under 17 winning World Cup team last year in Egypt. Ritzo gets on with it quickly. Blatzis in position, as was Damianos. And the chance for Fernando and the counter attack. He turns the ball wide. Marco Antonio needs to wait. And Rocha provides the return ball as the striker streams down the right, but closed down brilliantly by Jacob Burns, who covered a lot of territory. And the good sized crowd appreciating top quality defending. Well, 23 minutes has elapsed, and uh, Marco Antonio has put this game wide open with his 11th minute goal. Rocha taken down with no whistle for the foul. Well, just to think, Australia only scored its second victory at any level against Brazil the other night. The first being in 1992 in the SBS Challenge in Perth. And they are one win away from a series victory against the premier nation in the world, Matuzalan, to the near post. And Marco Antonio was nearly presented with an opportunity. Matuzalan, John, is beginning to show his class, just uh, his improvisation is a pleasure to watch. Yeah, the, the typical uh, left-footed player who they seem to do things better and, and, and with more style than right-footed somehow. But he was the fourth top scorer uh, when uh, Brazil won that uh, World Cup in Egypt. And I, we haven't seen the best of him yet. He's capable of, of much more. Just on those past results with Brazil, of course, at under 20 level, uh, Australia did have a draw or drew uh, twice in the SBSU Challenge in 92. Lost one of those on penalty shootout in the final. And also uh, in the final uh, of a tournament in Venezuela in 92, they had a draw and again lost to Brazil on penalty. So the record at youth level is quite good. Brazil forced to defend and uh, possession here to Australia. Kyle Patterson again. Just quickly, David, the report on uh, Simon Klosmo is he was winded more than hurt in the shoulder, so he'll be OK. And it's interesting to note, Raul Blanco, a bit concerned about this reorganisation. Jason Clint are now warming up, so quite possibly one of those defenders might be coming off to make way for a true midfield player to make more advantage. Raul also worried about being a little bit impatient at the moment, the Oli Roos. They've got the advantage, but maybe not keeping the ball as much as they should be to make the Brazilians do the running. Back to you, David. Well, that was Kalina's job in the latter part of the match on Saturday night, just to hold the ball up, John. Yes, no, it's a good move. I think uh, 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 Bove, I can't recall playing out, out of midfield, um, but I would think to bring on a, a midfield player, and Jason, of course, uh, we know can, can play that role so well, is the right way to go. A good decision, perhaps a bit late, but uh, I believe the right decision. Matusalem wrenches his way free, and Marco Antonio plays a ball in front of Gustavo, but uh, the skidding surface and uh, a bit of poor direction from the number 19 is the undoing of Brazil. And a promising move. So apart from that goal, it really has been a 50-50 match. Australia have looked just as threatening as their opponents. But so, who was so lively in the first game, and with Grella controlled midfield. Zane. Rebounds free for Damianos. He's been on the bench, this man, for Liverpool. And earns the free kick ahead of midfield. And just to think of a Australian teenager at such a glamour club. Grello as Emerson floated into the far post. Fabio had that ball covered well. The Brazilians as Rocha will occupy a position on the right in the absence of Eroberto. Fernando. Colosimo looks like he's overcome that uh, knock a few minutes ago. He's a very tough customer. He missed the World Youth Championship in Malaysia last year with an injury. One of many players on the injured list, along with uh, Casey Veerman. So he gets his crack at uh, 
top level football and he really has taken his opportunity so far Archie Thompson another player who needs time on the park after missing game one he's been lively with Gippsland this year there's the Brazilian bench the coach is not in shot for the moment Toninho Barroso he's been uh, very calm in the series saying it's a learning process for these young players when you think they've got the likes of Denilson not in the squad and a number of other under 23s playing in Europe certainly does promise to be a mouth-watering tournament come Sydney 2000 Olympics here's Matusalem in the path here of Fernando the number 10 for Brazil Milosevic has to clear in a hurried fashion and he had that uh, lip injury in the first game he's just uh, chatting away quite enthusiastically to his defence Andy Milosevic now playing in Germany one of three overseas based players with Bove and also Nick Rizzo Yala. Milosevic under pressure once again and uh, that's twice that he perhaps the communication hasn't been the greatest between he and the fellow defenders. The Australia not playing at the moment. No, the composure on the ball is uh, nowhere near what it should be. And a little bit of, of panic at the back. I mean, they've just got to start to, to play, as we know they can play from the other night. Just uh, keeping possession and a little bit more conservative in, in uh, their build-up and the opportunities and patience and the opportunities will come at the moment i think there's too much anxiety and they are flatter i mean it's fair to say psychologically they are down a bit on what they were the other night which is understandable because you have a result you beat brazil i mean how do you come down off that and i think they're suffering from that aspect of their game at the moment lovely tackle again by colosimo that's uh, three crackers he's produced in the first half to really stem the brazilian attack and Fernando, who was a little bit quiet the other night, the number 10, certainly has had an impact in the first half, not scared to mix it in the physical stakes. There's Jacob Burns, the Sydney United youngster. So in field possession, Australia have had the better above the 50% mark compared to Brazil around the 30% uh, mark or high 30s. Out wide is Komblatsis who combines with his South Melbourne teammate Damianos. Bove pushes up. Zane, nice one touch play here by Australia. Damianos, here's Archie Thompson. Working his way to scoring range. And that is a brilliant passage of play. And the first real piece of quality movement from Archie Thompson we've seen. It all started in their own half, but Archie Thompson had the final touch and he cracked the shot straight into the lap of Fabio. So Australia, the fifth shot on goal to Brazil's one. Where they've scored. And there's Damianos again in the replay. We'll do Archie a lot of good for his conference. It's been a little bit quiet so far, and uh, to take someone on and get a shot in will certainly uh, improve that conference, which is necessary when you play up front. Brazil's showing at the moment uh, that they're not just a, a fine attacking team, which is where, where their reputation comes from, but they also know how to defend. Uh, they're 10 against 11. They've, uh, according to the stats, which I find a little bit difficult to believe, at 67% to Australia, 33 to Brazil. And Brazil restricting Australia just uh, five attempts at goals. That shows that they, when necessary, can defend very, very efficiently. Here's Zane. Playing fairly deep. And the overlapping player, Damianos, now gaps are appearing to open, but the mistake there by Damianos and uh, Kyle Patterson is on the sidelines with the information. Thanks, David. Yes, that uh, further reorganisation being contemplated by Ralph Blanco is on hold. Jason Clinton now back on the bench, having uh, had a bit of a warm-up. 
from my point of view, the problem down here is that uh, pushing forward into that midfield role, Raphael Bovo really is filling the same sort of hole that uh, Vince Grella uh, serves as that holding player in the midfield. Maybe they'll wait till half time where they can sit the players down and talk them through some of the reorganisation. The other minor change is Archie Thompson being encouraged to push up further, maybe coming a little bit too deep looking for the ball. He's been encouraged to push up further onto the last man to obviously make the Brazilians defend a bit deeper. At the moment they're able to uh, you know, nullify the uh, numerical advantage we have by squashing up the midfield play. So uh, we'll keep an eye on those tactical changes for now. The, the guys out there have to uh, work it out for themselves. Back to you, David. Thanks, Carl. Nick Rizzo with the free kick. Turns it in with the left boot. And it's the chance here for Australia. First time it was Zane. And I think he was even surprised at the ball at his feet. And Fabio would have been concerned at the ease of the marking on that occasion. And just uh, rebound and half volley over the crossbar. of inches over that crossbar so a close call there for the Brazilians and that was a foul and the advantage of Australia Damianos and they're looking a lot more lively through the midfield now Latsis loves to push up Damianos a nice switch of play Burns runs at the defender so second touch just got away from him Latsis has had a solid season for South Melbourne, perhaps not uh, as brilliant as last season. Burns. Thompson now beginning to find the ball. And create some problems for Brazil. On that occasion, the ball was wide, but uh, his pace and uh, improvisation is certainly going to cause concern for the Brazilian defence around Philippe Alvim on that occasion. Fabio. 17 year old, he was one of five players to play in that uh, World Youth or World Cup winning uh, under 17 team of last year in Egypt. They beat Ghana in the final. Rizzo, Emerson, nice turn by the Oliru captain, just gets around Matusalem to the back post, and Jacob Burns just runs out of room, and uh, Emerson has been one player that uh, the Brazilians, John, have obviously learnt of his quality from game one. Yes, more. Uh, there's been a lot of activity on the right. We have had very little on the left. That would be a criticism of uh, the way our boys have played so far in the first half. Emerton getting forward on the right. But we need that happening on both sides of the field. When the team is reduced 10 men, it is important to stretch them. And I don't think that we have utilised the width of the pitch enough in doing that to Brazil. Fernando found right in front of the, the big grandstand here at Highmarsh. Of course, the stadium remodeled in surface and uh, exterior. We see that foul by Bovey. And there may, be, there may be some action off the ball. Players restarted. I think uh, I thought for the moment Yudi Bazali was shaping to produce the yellow card, but uh, I think he was just doubling back to get into position very quickly. Thompson. Rodrigo. Arusham, the captain. Close quarters, the midfield has been played at. And Colosimo finds some space in the form of Latsis and in turn, Grella, who's had a productive first half, and Burns is free on the left. Australia beginning to create some openings. Switch of play was attractive. And here's Bove pushing up the sweeper. Emerson steps around the number six, Gustavo in the process just uh, pushing the ball over the 
line for a goal kick was Fabio. And uh, I can tell you from training, the number two goalkeeper is very lively as well. So Fabio has uh, certainly some competition. Yamada is the number two goalkeeper. And he was affecting some brilliant saves in training the other night. To represent Brazil at any level is an achievement. A nation with uh, its history so rich. This is a good opportunity and a very early opportunity to taste a piece of Australia before the Olympics. Long searching ball for Gustavo down the left. This is promising for Brazil. And danger times for Australia. Turns around one. And uh, good defending in the end. Matuzalem. He's got good pace and skill to the back post. And that was a pretty ball in. Matuzalem showed on such a small diameter what a dangerous player he is. You can see here, Latsis was the defender and just took a deflection and in the end hit the side netting. But Matuzalem, after showing patchy form in the opening game, has certainly been one of the big influences for Brazil. The corner. Poorly taken. And covering the angle was Brett Everton. And Fernando, outside the penalty area, he's got players in the central position. The good composure shown there by Jacob Burns, and perhaps the counter here from Australia, Bovey. Well, that was crude, and that certainly is a yellow card. Well, their tackling has been reckless on occasions, and Rodrigo, the offender, on Nick Bovey. Well, and most of it on Rizzo. That's about the fourth bad challenge if we like he just skips past so quickly there and he's a real target for, for brazil he had such a fine game with so in the first match and really uh if we can call it doing your homework but uh the leagues have been taken on four occasions now. Damianos. zane still clayton zane Surrounded by defenders, and that was a penalty or a free kick, in fact. Outside the area. I think I'm even getting a bit ahead of myself, but uh, Zane did very well. The last challenge in the end was uh, the one ruled by the referee coming forward for Ujim. And an interesting set piece just outside the penalty area. So close to half time, this is a worrying sign for Brazil. We will say Australia rehearsing some set pieces in training. They've got a number of combinations up their sleeve. And it's Rizzo through the wall. And it wrestles free. A goal here surely for Australia. certainly put a fair deal of spice in this second match of the series. And it was set up by the free kick taken from this man, Rizzo. Through the wall, just took a slight defection and that was a poor effort by Fabio. The rebound and perhaps it uh, caught the arm of Gustavo in the end. Clayton Zane had the final say. Yes, the swerve, the spin on it has upset uh, Fabio. And uh, Zane does so well to get it through the pack here. Uh, Boyd, by that effort, Australia pushing forward. Who is 
skills by the Brazilian captain. And he accepts the return ball here. And again, Colosimo, the final defender, just sliding in for such a clinical tackle. And he's so clean to Simon Colosimo in his defensive efforts. A real modern defender with a lot of pace and anticipation. Arugia lapses the clearance away. And Zane was clearly held, perhaps in frustration there by Rocha, the number 15, who came off the bench. Clayton Zane's all arms and legs, but he certainly is a very tough proposition for any defender. Square for Rafael Bove of the Overseas Brigade. Damianos Thompson and taken down there by Rodrigo in the tackle. Brazil's certainly not out of trouble yet, but uh, the foul committed by Archie Thompson and Kyle Patterson has some news on the sidelines. Yes, thanks, David. Just an observation from here, looking behind camera, which obviously you can't always see. The imbalance is, is clear to see Rilla and Rafael Bove effectively playing the same sort of role. Neither is getting ahead of the ball making attacking runs. They're both playing that holding role and we're really duplicating things. I think that is where the imbalance is for the Australians. It's something I'm sure that will be addressed at half time. But at the moment we're not getting full value from the numerical advantage because effectively we're doubling up in that holding role in the midfield. Back to you David. Thanks Carl. There's Matuzalem. As we see the moment of Glory here for Australia. Rizzo and Fabio just spilled the ball. Latsis looked certain to score. And in the end, it was Clayton Zane off a very awkward situation. Had to get through two defenders. And he did it with great was aplomb. It well, that's a, another Not question. Zane. I think we'll take one back from the MCG, John. <laughs> well, to be fair, we, we, we won't complain, of course, but to be fair... But sadly, the first half, the Brazil losing the player, what it has done to the game is taken out any chance of us seeing Brazil attack with the style and grace that they can. They're in very much in a holding position now. They scored to hold on to it to get the draw out of this game to keep their chances alive. It's only going to be a quick counter-attack that uh, we're going to see them in attack. We're not going to see the beautiful flowing football from them because of the man down uh, situation and that's the sad aspect of what happened in the fifth minute when Everberto was sent off correctly uh, one must add but uh, it has one feels robbed the public here and the viewers a chance to see uh, Brazil play uh, the beautiful football that they can play Baptist and uh, Emerton has been uh, certainly well marked on that right hand side lessons learnt from a very good performance in game one and Australia just content to hold the ball at midfield Zane has certainly grown in stature as the half has grown longer and Emerson with a hint of some space down the right Bove Colosimo a lot of class about the way he plays and the Oli Roo captain so they're soaking up the seconds close to the break and now Jacob Burns scooped up in the path here of Emerton and he was well, for the moment, I thought he was fouled by Matusalem, but uh, he can't believe the non-call from the referee. It's a difficult angle to make a judgment, but uh, I think Brett Emerton may have had some claims. He said during the week that he's resisting offers from overseas and would prefer to stay in Australia. 
until the Sydney 2000 Games, which is a very admirable attitude to have, a player of his quality. And that is half time, as blown by Eugene Brazzani. So Brazil have come up with a fair result at the break, given the fact that they lost Eriberto in the fifth minute after receiving his second yellow card in an incident with Comblatis. And then against the run of play, it was Marco Antonio who scored in the 11th minute for the Brazilians. And close to the stroke of half time, Peyton Zane emerged from a congested penalty area to slot away the equaliser. And as the players go to the break, they know the second half is in abeyance and a good result from Australia would see them tidy up a series win over a world-class opposition. So at the half-time break, here at Haimo Stadium, it's Australia 1, Brazil 1. We'll be back after this short break. They come from all over the Muslim world to see the last remaining Mubasha. He is fifth generation and performs the ultimate test for revealing the truth. Visha, the awesome fire test, Wednesday at 8. The Bikini Islands became a marine graveyard when 23 ships were deliberately sunk in a bizarre experiment. The Bikinians left believing they were giving up their island for the good of mankind, little knowing that 50 years later they still couldn't go back. To me personally, I don't even care if there's radiation there. Whatever they're saying, I just want to go back. Nuclear Nomads, the Bikini Islanders, 7.30 Thursday on SBS. The year is 1958. James Dean has just invented method acting. Laker is the first dog in space. And somewhere in Belgium, the students of St. Joseph's are learning about life, the law and love. Finding thrills on Blueberry Hill, Friday night at 9.30. <laughs> Tales from the Far Side, 9 o'clock, Saturday. And welcome back. It's half time on match day two of the Oli Roo Challenge. The score is one apiece. Remember, of course, that it's a best of three match series. The final match at the WACA in Perth is on Saturday night. If you want to get along there to the game in Perth, book your tickets through Red Ticket on Perth 9484 That's 9484 
Well, um, Andy Harper and Nick Theodorakopoulos are back with us. Andy, what did you think of that, uh, the first half? Uh, pretty even? Uh, well, very even, as the score would indicate. I, I thought a bit sterile, to be honest, uh, Les. I, um, I certainly enjoyed it, but I, I thought it was sterile. The, the, the ball movement of the Australians was a bit too slow. And uh, even though the, the Brazilians were down a man, uh, I don't feel it was so much we didn't capitalise on the man advantage. It was the fact that we didn't move the ball quickly enough to break down their well-disciplined zone defence. And, and most zone defence operate only with eight, eight players, two lines of four, and, and we just didn't break that down because the ball movement was too slow, in my view. We did capitalise, but it took us, took us a while, though, didn't we, to, to make those tactical changes at the back, Nick? It did, Liz. I also feel that we weren't going wide enough as well. Uh, we've got Jacob Burns operating up and down that left-hand side, and he traditionally is a right-sided player. And I noticed a few times that he was checking in field. In saying that, um, we saw uh, Ralph Bove be pushed into the midfield just in front of Vinnie Grella, and I think that was a positive note. All right, let's have a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And, of course, the first notable incident was uh, just about, I would think, would have been the, uh, the sending off of Eriberto. In, in fact, that was the first yellow card that he got. So, um, and there was the second. So you might just, you might want to comment on uh, just what happened here uh, in your view. Andy, there was well, the incident there on the, on the left-hand side of your screen. A picture tells a thousand words. Look, it was patently obvious right from the kickoff and for the duration of the first half that the Brazilians were quite uncharacteristically flustered and, and uh, certainly referee Eugene Brazali was getting right under their skin for whatever reason and never quite seen a Brazilian side get so flustered. Well, the fluster was at the other end, and Nick, uh, with the, with the, suddenly, down to 10 minutes, the Brazilians who score. Yeah, it was a set piece we saw on Saturday, um, Australia score both goals from set pieces, but tonight it was on the other foot. We saw the free kick taken there, uh, coming off one of our defenders, and uh, the Paul Trimboli look-alike, or player-like, putting mm. the ball in the back of the net. Somebody having an air swing. Yeah, Nick, uh, Ralph, Rafael Bove there. Um, made to look less capable than he really is in that situation, but 1-0 to Brazil and, and uh, against the run of play. As okay. Nick says, I, I agree with Nick, we saw very little of that down, the, uh, down either flank. We just didn't move the ball quickly enough into those open spaces and, and Brazil readjusted themselves nicely enough and uh, we really caused no problems. We saw Brett Edmonton there making the run a very good cross. You see Archie Thompson going to the, the near post, but unfortunately just a fraction too late. Well, Archie Thompson is looking as though he's going to come off at half time. Good crack there again. Goalkeeper was busy uh, in this first half. He was actually, Les, but I'm not convinced. Um, he looked that solid. I think around the 20th minute or so, we had a couple of corners and he looked uh, quite shaky on the far post as well. So um, maybe they haven't sorted their set piece problems out. Here we see Archie Thompson taking on his defender, but straight into the keeper. At the end of a, at the end of a, a great little move by the Australians. And, and the key to that, without wishing to harp on it, um, although that's my name, uh, is <laughs> the speed of the ball. Harp on it, and yeah. Well, the, the speed of the ball movement yeah, created that yeah, chance for Archie. Yeah. And little one touches. Well. Yeah, yeah, beautiful stuff. But it was very uh, few and far between. And, and and this is the case to me. The Brazilians look remonstrating with the referee. They're really struggling to cope. Uh, with the authority that Eugene Brazali is trying to establish on the game. And that, that was probably the telling factor for mine from the Brazilian point of view in the first half. So do they have a chance, Nick? I mean, uh, they're down to 10 men. Obviously, they need a good talking to. That was a good free kick by Rizzo. But they need a good talking to from their coach. So I'm sure he, uh, Tonino would have been very disappointed at conceding a goal three minutes before half-time. I'm sure he would have wanted to, to get the boys into the dressing room, uh, reorganise a few things, Obviously tell them that um, you can still do it even though you're down to 10 men. But I think um, obviously you know, conceding the goal would lift the Australian spirits at half-time. OK, how do you see it going in the second half, Andy? Well, I would like to see Australia do, do better, obviously. A bit, bit quicker with the ball movement, a bit more penetration from midfield perhaps, and to try and capitalise on, on the spaces that they've, they've got numerically. All right, Andy. Uh, thanks very much, Nick. Thank you. Uh, let's catch up with uh, the latest at the scene itself at the Hindmarsh Stadium. Standing by is Carl Patterson. Thanks, Les. Welcome back, everyone, here to Hindmarsh. Of course, at halftime, 1-1, Australia and Brazil. Brazil down to 10 men with that send-off. And news from the dressing rooms, just the one change for Australia going into the second half. 
Archie Thompson will come out of the game to be replaced by Michael Kersija. The Brazilians will keep those same 10 players on the park. To discuss some of the options now, Socceroo captain Alex Tobin, who knows all about playing against the Brazilians after the Confederation Cup. Alex, good evening. Good evening. A bit of a tactical dilemma for the Australians, that extra man advantage, but maybe haven't used it quite well yet. Probably not as well as they, uh, that, as they should have with the... With the 10 men, they really should get a lot of possession, try to get wide and get crosses over for you know, players like Zane and uh, um, you know, Emerton has shown a little bit of that on, on one side, perhaps a little bit more on the left-hand side as well, but um, they'll be, their confidence will be lifted after getting that late goal. One of the talking points has been that Grella and Raphael Bove seem to be duplicating the role of the holding midfield player, but it's dangerous, I suppose, for Rob Blanca to maybe take one of them off and get caught on the break. Exactly, you have to worry about... Uh, Brazil's uh, ability to do something special to you know one of their front runners uh, a turn of pace and to get away so defensively they have to get things in order but with the man advantage they should be able to push it around and perhaps get a few more players forward as well. One of the surprising things tonight for everybody the aggression of the Brazilians and the niggle they've brought to the game now we knew beforehand they were trying to match the Australians with the physical commitment but maybe overdoing it a little bit a lot of frustration they're not really playing a lot of footy are they? Yes perhaps not these, the style that they're, they're used to and uh, you know to get a player sent off in that sort of fashion is very disappointing for Brazil as well and uh, uh, I think perhaps they really should concentrate on where their strengths are you know try to outplay the Australians with with the uh, you know the skills that they can you know we know that they can show and uh, you know maybe they can get back into the game well, I guess from your point of view having uh, suffered the grief of a 6-0 defeat by Brazil it's nice to see the green and gold giving a bit back exactly it's nice to have Brazil with 10 men instead of Australia with 10 men but uh, yeah hopefully uh, Australia can push on and get a great result tonight okay Alex Tobin soccer captain thank you very much for your time tonight thank you OK, so that is the news from half-time. One change for Australia, Archie Thompson coming out of the game. Michael Kasija coming in, no change for the Brazilians. We'll be back with the second half from Hindmarsh after this break. On the movie show, Clint Eastwood turns his eye to the eccentric south in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. This place is fantastic. It's like gone with the wind on Mescal. A young woman embarks on a self-destructive journey in Under the Skin. And a contemporary retelling of Charles Dickens' classic tale, Great Expectations. I want to paint your portrait. The movie show, Wednesday night at 7.30. Here at SBS, we have an award-winning world news at 6.30. But we know that it's a busy world and that you lead busy lives. You have commitments to work and responsibilities at home. Sometimes keeping in touch with the day's events can be impossible. So we've introduced a second news bulletin, a later one at 9 p.m. World News at 9 with Indira Naidu. Still the same comprehensive coverage of international affairs. Still the same quality journalism that you've come to expect. SBS, now with two different news services to give you one truly global perspective. Monday, tutti, everyone and everything. What did you think of Scottish cuisine? Great. See, I'm, I'm a half Scottish, so it's naturally inbred into me to eat offal. With Jeanne Rickmans. Would you remarry? Um, I'm not so sure about the actual marriage thing. And we're here at the First Wives Club uh, because we're both living apart, separated, divorced. And she was trying to apologise. She's going, oh, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. We just fell in love. And Anthony Murr. How did your parents react when you were getting married? Um, he used to say, oh, African men are polygamous and, you know. I still have my good days and bad days, but the call is so strong that um, I'll do anything. You know, God asked me to chop off my right hand, I would. It annoys me more when I hear Jewish people doing stereotypical Jewish jokes. And I'm being, I'm Scottish and Jewish. What are you debating tonight? We're debating that, uh, that four skins are better than none. Tutti, 7.30 Monday nights on SBS. Toyota World Sports. the 
best in sport, both local and abroad, at 7 p.m., seven days a week. Toyota World Sports. Second half underway here at Homo Stadium, Australia 1, Brazil 1. And it's poised to be an exciting second 45 minutes. With Brazil down to 10 men. And Australia, as we heard, bringing Michael Gassija on to replace Archie Thompson. And immediately the Brazilians into attack. And just uh, an awkward one there for Danny Milosevic. Australians perhaps will go to half time just remodeling their tactics with that man advantage. Damianos dispossessed by Latuzolo. Fernando just wriggles out of the situation. Is the captain for Ushim. Latuzolo fouled there clearly. And he was one player Brazil were really looking to in the first half to create. Colosimo. Always a very neat and aggressive defender. Very rarely makes a mistake in the tackle, Simon Colosimo. And John, we just wait to look and see how Australia remodels in the second half. And Grella, in his own half. Kyle, you have some information on the sidelines. Yeah, thanks, David. Just to confirm that that uh, change at half time by the Olly Roos was to uh, take into account that Archie Thompson had a reoccurrence of that shin soreness. So, not so much a tactical change to, uh, to get Michael Procedure in, but that Archie Thompson was struggling a bit with that uh, injury which had bothered him during the uh, the camp in Sydney. So uh, bad luck for Archie Thompson, his uh, Hollywood debut there coming to a premature end. Back to you, David. Thanks, Carl. And Brazil, down the left, create a long ball by Gustavo. And Marco Antonio, who was the goal scorer in the 11th minute, but uh, short-circuiting that move was Komblatsis, who was a very solid defender in the first half. Brett Eminem wasn't at his brilliant best, as opposed to the other night when he was an absolute match winner. He certainly had an impact. Colosimo. And Kasija, the return ball to Simon Colosimo, who loves to get forward. And on that occasion, he fouled the number four for Brazil, Rodrigo. And the yellow card on Simon Colosimo. Yeah, it's a high challenge. Just on, uh, you were talking about Emerton earlier. I mean, what has happened uh, tonight is that Gustavo, the left side of defender for Brazil, is more on a man-to-man -man marking job on Emerton. I wonder whether Australia would be well advised as such to play Emerton in the role he plays for his club, Sydney Olympic, where they've moved him into midfield and uh, to change it around to give him more freedom because Gustavo doing a, a, a good job in limiting his this incident again it is a bit high yes and uh, it, it is a yellow card well the mini ambulance has been called for much to the jeers of the crowd here at Highmarsh and uh, the number four is removed from the field, Rodrigo, who came into the match with a question mark over his fitness. 
And Kyle, have you got some updated information? Yes, I've just got a report that at half time in the Brazilian dressing room, Toninho Barroso, the Brazilian coach, was furious, more so at uh, the referee than his own players, but he said that they were getting uh, you know, possibly drawn in to unnecessary physical battles, which uh, seems to contradict the, the pre-game instructions for his players to get involved, but a furious coach, and I don't think we'll see any lessening of the Brazilian uh, physical resolve here, but they are quite at edge. They're quite, they're feeling a bit, feeling injustice that referee Eugene Brazelli isn't giving them a fair uh, go tonight, but uh, we'll leave the viewers to make their own conclusions there. Thanks, Dave. For Gustavo, a field for possession, but uh, is overturned. Going instead to Australia. Damianos in the air. And there certainly is some needle still in this match. Casija. But Fernando with the opportunity here for Brazil. One way, then the other. Perugia. But the offside flag is up. And the captain was denied the chance there. But uh, his shot hit the side netting in the end. Well, clearly in an offside position. Yes, it was the, the, the delivery of the ball was, uh, it should have come earlier from Fernando, who's been a little disappointing. You do expect a lot more. He had a quiet game in Sydney. You do expect more from someone who wears number 10. It's almost a badge, or is a badge of honour in South America. They're famous, of course, because of the legendary Pelé, the number 10, worn by the best player. But Fernando has been anything but that so far, and he's delaying that pass. Perugia was running offside. Number two, seven. He's shown the yellow card and then asked for perhaps an interpretation of the final details of the rule book. It was quickly whisked away there by the referee. And, well, he completely ignored the uh, utterances of Eugene Bazzari. Emerton curling ball in. And here's a chance for Australia, but cleared by Russia. That was a lovely... Long ball by Brett Everton. And he'd be looking to stamp his mark on the second half as he did on the first match. Rella, lovely switch of play. And a bit too hot there for Jacob Burns. And turn fouls the Brazilian player, Philippe Alvin. There's a portion of the big crowd and the new stadium here at Highmarsh as we see. Jacob Burns Uring. Well, there wasn't much in that, but uh, in the end it was technically there as Perugia comes away, the Brazilian captain. Matusalem. And again, the free kick given to Brazil. The Brazilians try to keep the series alive. They'll be certainly uh, in a holding pattern in the second half, down to 10 men with the send-off of Barabato in the fifth minute. And just reflecting on that moment, it was quite uh, undisciplined when you consider he was given a yellow card in the second minute and involved in an off-the-play incident in the fifth minute. That would have incensed the coach. No end at half-time. Well, that's where the anger should be directed. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the referee has been very fair to both sides. Uh, if you get two yellows in the first five minutes, I think he deserved to be sent off. As sad as that has been for the game, because again, uh, it has deprived us of seeing uh, the best of Brazil. Base are coming on. The South Melbourne mm -hmm. sweeper into a wide roll, so it'll be interesting to see where he positions, replacing Jacob Burns. And Australia march forward. Early touch for Baser, who accepts there for Rizzo. And a chance here for Australia. Damianos, the clearance away by Russia. And a fabulous effort there by Rafael Bova. Well, the reason for the change is that uh, Baser getting forward there, that's something that hasn't happened for Australia. I think one of the problems for Jacob Burns in that role that he's better player on the other side of the field. But let's have a look at this again first. Great effort from Rizzo. And the volley, what a goal this would have been to hit the net. 
but Burns being a right-sided play player, when he gets the ball on the left there, he tends to come in, and that narrows the attack, and Australia weren't getting the width. Now, Australia will be looking for Baser to get forward, as he did then, get behind the Brazilian defence, and to get uh, the quality crosses in, as he did, and it's always a, a goal-scoring opportunity in that situation. Jason Kalita also warming up on the sidelines, so another move in the offing for Australia. Colosimo controls it deep in his own half. Alvim taken down and fouled there by Basic. Play goes on Marco Antonio. And a loose man at the back post was Matuzalem. The, the ball had neither the carry nor the direction to reach that player. Jason Kalina is a lively player in midfield. A lot of pace, great distribution. And he'd be looking to make an immediate impact. The corner to Brazil. Taken to the near post. And Rizzo is showing no effects of that thigh injury that's threatened to keep him out of the match. He perhaps hasn't been at his uh, scintillating best as he was in the opening game, but certainly has had an impact on this match. Tanzil Basin plays for his club size as a sweeper, South Melbourne. He's now asked to occupy a wide left-hand role for the Oli Roos. And coming off the park is one of the internationals, Raphael Bove, who plays for Heron Veen in Holland. He's replaced by Jason Kalina, so a defender for a midfielder. Well, Bove has been operating in midfield. It's not uh, the role that suits him. Another alternative there would have been uh, Bove to the right side in Emerton's role. And uh, I would like to see Emerton come out of the middle of more because, as we mentioned earlier, Gustavo is limiting what he can do on this right flank. Put Bove there, perhaps, and Emerton in the middle. But uh, the coaching decision is the other one, and it, it, it is... The bottom line is it is a good change. Kalina, if he gets off to a good start, can have a, have a, a big input in this match. Basa. Tackle was allowed to go on by the referee. And here's Kalina with an early touch. On for Witzer, who loves taking on defenders, but uh, well, it was a bit too clever in the end there for Clayton Zane. And it allows Matusalem to counter-attack here for Brazil. Through he goes, Fernando. And... No foul call there by the referee and a correct call at the end. And Carl, you've got some information. Thanks, David. And just to pick up on Johnny's point, he was spot on. The instructions for Tanzel Bozer from Raul Blanco were to get wide, to stretch the Brazilians. The Australians were a bit too narrow. Jacob Burns, as Johnny identified, a right-sided player normally, intended to come inside. So Bozer's mission, as well as getting forward, is to keep the Brazilians stretched. And of course, that uh, Jason Kalina move, something that was on the cards early. And uh, let's see if it pays dividends. Back to you, David. Rizzo, outside the area. Kalina has a wide player loose in Tanza Baser. Pumps the ball in. And they're still coming Australia from long range. What an offer. And that was a great effort there by Rich Grella. He summed up the option. He saw there was none wide and blazed away from 30 metres. He's hit it sweetly. And it was a very athletic in effort in the end by Fabio. So another move by Brazil. Fernando, the number 10, coming off for Edu, who was substituted in the second half. So Brazil trying to inject some attacking prowess into their game. The back post, Zane. And Michael Kersija comes up with two goals in the series. Well, you'd have to say it's been their Achilles heel. The corners throughout the tournament so far, Brazil. And it was Rizzo providing to the back post. A touch on there 
from Colossomo. And the final touch by Michael Kersikian. And that's four goals now in the series from dead ball situation. Brissot involved again. Beautiful ball in. Good brave challenge. And the Kersikia super sub. Well, he's okay. uh, certainly taking the mantle off Ernie Taffo pretty quickly. And he hasn't had the greatest of seasons with his club side, South Melbourne, and just suddenly producing something off the bench for the Oliwoos. And against Brazil, I might add. It's not a bad opponent to do it against. down the left and Marco Antonio with a fortuitous touch off Colosimo Gustavo into space and around one defender he ends the free kick on the edge of the penalty area so this would be a dangerous moment for Australia we can see around Vince Grella well make your own mind up Tuzalem, a left-sided player. Three-man wall, turned in, and headed cleanly by Colosimo. And John, whether that's just coincidence, I just sense it's not. Simon Colosimo just seems to be in the right place at the right time. It's not coincidence. <laughs> just uh, read his. Back post ball by Matuzalem. And Baser signalling a release here for Rizzo. I was saying that about Colosimo a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but Perugian in the tackle with the midfield dynamo and he really is just running his heart out Nick Rizzo and just showing why Australians are so widely regarded overseas as Clayton Zane bounces off two defenders Australia's commitment is very evident at the moment. They're up 2-1, and they certainly are not resting on their laurels. Emerson. There's Damianos, and closed down by Matusalem. Well, in many ways, with the, the send-off, it's certainly been a game of chess for both coaches trying to reshape their sides. At the moment, Australia ahead on points. Baser, the centering ball in. Arugia, the captain. Marco Antonio, Matuzalem, lovely skills. He's got two players to contend with. One is very pacey and bad evident. And as much as he pushes up, he really does do some very good work in defence as well. a world youth team of last year in Malaysia the highlights when Australia beat Argentina this is getting free on the left and creating some problems for Brazil Damianos for his South Melbourne teammate Kalina who's a very nippy customer at midfield lovely switch of play and here's Brett Everton and a took a deflection and surely a quarter outside the field of play by Fabio. Well, an interesting time here for Brazil, John. Yes, beautiful football from Australia, letting the ball do all the running, switching one side to the other. And uh, that is quite simply what you have to do uh, when you have the, the man advantage. But good, uh, good build-up from Australia and another corner and obviously other more problems for Brazil with this one. Rizzo. Deep in and almost a touch there to the back of the net by Kersija, who surprisingly was unmarked at the face of goal, and that really would be a worrying sign for Brazil. But credit again to Aritza. We made the, the, the point the other day, other night in Sydney, the quality of his free kicks and corner kicks, the curve in. 
has been one of uh, the real pluses for the Australian team. Conversely for Brazil, I mean, uh, they would be horrified at the way they have defended, particularly in Sydney and on certain occasions this evening. Early on you thought they were doing it a lot better, but uh, in, in recent uh, minutes they really have been exposed again, particularly at corner kicks. And their substitutes are really doing well, Australia. Kalina beginning to make an impact in midfield. He's on the ball now, the number 16. Just lovely skills and great vision. And they're beginning to hold the ball very successfully in midfield. Brazil down a man, which doesn't make the job any easier. Everton and Damianos would have gleaned a lot of knowledge under Terry Venables in the recent Optus series. Everton playing in that series as Baser is again free down the left. He runs at Philippe Alvim and no foul there. Well, for a man that uh, has played his season as sweeper, Tanza Baser, he's not doing a bad job on the left. Uh, of course, he's played a lot of his football on that left-hand side. Gustavo. Right on the line there. And he was found by Eminem. Matusalem doesn't certainly step away from a challenge. Adu. Gustavo, lovely return ball to Adu. Who runs into Simon Colosimo. And again, Colosimo is just up like... in the ocean really he is just such a, a fine athlete a very tall man but uh, plays as a quick defender very strong in the air and uh, composed on the ball there's Adu who came on for Fernando the number 10 Adu plays more as an attacking midfield player as a striker procedure at close quarters and it comes free for Damianos lovely ball and uh, the player held there was Clayton Zane so the free kick to Australia as Brazil try to suggest to the referee it was otherwise and there's Michael Kersija sake it was much needed because Emerton was free of the Brazilian number six Grella Latsison they've combined so well at the back Australia there was a, a moment of uh, exposure in the 11th minute when uh, Marco Antonio scored but so since then it's been fairly solid Zane's done well up front the other end a number of Australians have been involved Damianos Emerson and he's really beginning to make an impact down the right he ends the free kick there and uh, a lot of animation there from Matusalem and there's the bench Raul Blanco with Adrian Santrak who part of the feeder system of coaches in Australia we saw in Sydney and the ball turned in Colossimo and the flag was up early as Edmonton was clearly offside I was just about to say Dave Mitchell in Sydney was uh, assisting Raul Blanco so Soccer Australia keen to get the younger coaches involved as Damianos provides a good intercept from his opposite number six and the player loose as Kasija tries to get through Fernando Santos. Corner! Corner! 
see Jerk just turns the ball back, but covering that near post. Pavillon. Walker ball there in the end by Matuzalem, handled very well. Marco Antonio. With a tough uh, ask for the lone striker on occasions, John, when they're just playing one up front, it's uh, very difficult to get anything going. Well, it was, that was a problem with the send-off, wasn't it? Once uh, that happened, it was always you had to, the normal thing is you take off the other striker, and uh, it's a big ask all the time. Particularly as Australia defence playing so well, hard but well. There's no nonsense about any of the tackles, and uh, it's been a tough road for Marco Antonio up front. He's covered a lot of territory. There's Rocha. I would still like to see Emerton. I'd like to see it try bring Emerton in inside and free him from uh, Gustavo but it's been much better second half from Australia some very good football the one touch passing and uh, changing of direction uh, it's good that it's been a lot more active on this on that side we're watching now on the left hand side which is playing a lot wider there's a lot more opening up, up. and of course Baser so it's given the Australian attack a lot more balance and it has given them width which of course as we mentioned uh, earlier in the first half there was a need to stretch Brazil rather than play it too tight down the middle Kalina Zane has some space in which to work in and down the right and he turns the ball in losing his footing there was Kosija as Kalina rushed in it's still alive here for Australia. Philippe Alvin with some lovely skills. Just steps around Kalina. Arujam, who plays in front of the back four usually. It's a bit of a different situation with one man off. So another substitute in the offing for Australia. The number 17. Christian Kerr from the Marconi Club coming on for Bill Damianos who certainly has done his part in midfield and one lively midfielder for another Australia has good depth on its bench but it's early stages in the Sydney 2000 campaign for both countries Brazil, of course, has none of its European stars here for the Australian tour. The most famous being Denilson, who is going to Betis in Spain, and Adiotto, who plays for Parma in Italy. They are the two highest profile Olympic aspirants. Of course, Denilson plays for the senior Brazilian team. But I, of course, you can say Australia has Ante Serich and Harry Kuehl, the most famous of its younger brigade, missing. Lovely back heel, Matusalem to Gustavo. They've shown glimpses of genius Brazil, but not enough of that. Uh, the back post defending there was Tanza Besa. Casita just lost his footing, but had the skill to get the ball across. And lovely switch of play to Rizzo down the left, around Alvim. And again, he just holds up the play. Australia prepared to wait in numbers. Here's the first touch for Kerr. Grella. Kasija. series and they face that prospect here and a chance for Australia Kalina cracks the shot into Alvim but he's still going low center of gravity at asset for Jason Kalina and he was clearly fouled well he really is a player of the future we saw that last year or well, last season in fact for Sydney United and certainly has gone on with it 
And that was more akin to a rugby tackle. By Gavion. The number 14. So interesting times here for Brazil. Down to 10 men and down two goals to one against a resurgent Australian team. Alvim loves pushing forward from his central defensive role. Antonio forced to take the ball very deep. And that has been the product of the numerical disadvantage Brazil find themselves in. Well, this man is very highly rated. Raul Blanco felt he was the real attacking danger for Brazil. But it's been a very tough going for Marco Antonio. Matusalem. Can Brazil make something of this? Long ball in, but not it away, clearly, in the path of Perugia, who attempts the back heel, but uh, Brazil right back on their heels. And with that player down, John, they're just not getting any width or system in midfield. No, there is an urgency about their game. They're just get to starting to take more and more risks. They know that uh, they have to throw a little bit forward if they're to pick a result up here. And this, of course, as they do that, will provide more clear-cut opportunities on the counter-attack for Australia. Australia wrestled themselves free through their captain, Brad Emerton, and in turn, Baser, who has said on many occasions has had an impact since coming from the bench and he certainly has created a number of avenues down that flank and here's Kalina he's lost his footing but good enough to get the ball back and he provided a very attractive cross in the end so the Australian service to their striking division has been first class tonight especially in the second half Matusalem Adu the number 17 for Brazil is Matusalem that uh, has to shoot from long range and Rizzo lovely control and great reflexes to control the ball was hotly played in onside is Gustavo this is dangerous for Australia uh, it was a defender shot at the end skewing wide but uh, he had the goalkeeper at his beckoning and really should have at minimum extracted a save the fact that he's forward, uh, there's a, a, an appeal for offside, he's not offside, but uh, did need a better finish. But it just indicates what we said uh, moments earlier, that Brazil, as time starts to run out now, will start to take more and more risks. And it's up to Australia to contain and then to hit quickly on the break because their chances on the counter have going to be much more frequent as Brazil start to open up. And we saw Australia in game one really close up the match in the last 10 minutes and really learn perhaps from a lot of heartache in the past at all levels just how to close a match you know, they have one man up on Brazil but they'll certainly have to deploy the same tactics as the Brazilians push forward Perugian, the captain well ahead of midfield and Casija was appeared to be found but the referee was right on the spot Here's Gustavo, who really is pushing up down that left flank. And a deep ball into the back post. Well, Danny Milosevic hasn't had a lot to do tonight, but uh, what he has done, he's done pretty well. Kalina has Clayton Zane one out and onside, but uh, two defenders surround the big striker. Everton. Switch of players on to Rizzo. And he finds the star midfielder. Here's a chance for Australia. Rizzo runs, taken down, and penalty call. Well, you can see it coming a mile off. Everton lifted the eyes, and Rizzo.
Russo was giving far too much space down that left-hand corridor. The Brazilians are appealing, but I think you'll find the penalty was there. Some justice too. I mean, Arizzo has been fouled on so many occasions, and he does this so well. He's able, in one-on-one, -on -one just to get past the defender, and the foul is on as a penalty. Well, it's up to Fabio now to save something here for Brazil, because Australia have a series victory, staring them fair square in the face. He's regarded as one of the great goalkeeping prospects. The spot kick taken by Nick Rizzo, and he puts it away. Australia 3-1. A sweet finish for the Liverpool youngster. And the Ollie Roos have taken advantage of Brazil down to 10 men. And thoroughly deserved. He's been involved in the first two goals uh, tonight, the free kick which was spilled and eventually put in by Zane, the uh, corner which set up uh, the procedure goal and uh, has been fouled a lot in this uh, series already, but particularly now, what a great penalty. Place to put them. And uh, it was his run and dribble which uh, brought out the foul and he's converted the kick. So into the goal scoring act, Vic Rizzo, as Australia are forced to defend at the other end. And a free kick given to Brazil. So it certainly isn't over yet for Australia. They've got a two goal cushion. But you never can deny the brilliance and improvisation of the Brazilians. Danny Milosevic is setting his wall. And there's a bit of activity in that wall as well. As Eugene Brazzati is... Uh, and a driving shot comes in! And the second effort not needed by Danny Milosevic. Well, that was very close. It hit the underside of the crossbar, but bounced the wrong side of the line. And it came in from Edu, I think you'll find. So the substitute nearly made his mark in spectacular fashion. Brazil pushing forward now, really throwing caution to the win. And another free kick to the Brazilians. And Simon Colosimo. Matusalem. Perugium short. And a chance for Brazil. Marco Antonio will score. So 3-2 the score now. As the striker completes a brace. And that has made things very interesting. So perhaps a lapse of concentration here. A very un-Brazilian free kick if you like. The, normally it's just a shot at the goal. And what a cool finish. No panic at all from Marco Antonio, just uh, dribbles Milosevic. The short one. Look this dribble here. Just cool and calm. And full marks to Brazil. I mean, uh, down to 10, they've, they've uh, kept it alive. Lesser would have uh, perhaps uh, sat back and said, well, that's, that's uh, all over. But they really are making something of this. Uh, they never like to lose, of course. Brazil, uh, it's just uh, almost a national disgrace, if you like, if you lose a, lose a game. So they would have their heads down after Sydney and uh, certainly don't want to have their heads down after tonight. But another change for Australia, Carlo on. 
Nick Carlo from Clayton Zane, the 16-year-old, who started in game one but was replaced by Thompson tonight. So mistakes beginning to happen for Australia. Adu and foul there, and this may be a yellow card. And it is on Comblatus. So the Australians are beginning to panic at the back. They're up 3-1 moments ago. And Adu has earned the free kick. And perhaps a bit harsh for the yellow card. ball situation and trying to turn it around the wall was Methuselah and the clearance away in haste for the Oli Roos. Witzow, lovely skills, he's just such a good player and a pleasure to watch. Perugia. The Brazilians get wide through Marco Antonio who's battled hard and very successfully up front with two goals and Villa gave away the foul there Alvin so they are rattled now the Oli Roos deep in the second half they still hold a 3-2 lead, but the Brazilians coming back hard. Gustavo cuts it back and a Brazil corner. The captain, Perugium, to the near post. Here's Rocha occupying some space. Alvin comes out and it perhaps caught the bottom part of his arm. There's no call by the referee. The Brazilians with some space at midfield. Perugia getting into the play more and more. Marco Antonio turns around one. Chance for Alvin. And the clearance by Baser. Matusalem on the turn first time. And he was looking fair square at the equaliser there. Can Rizzo mount a counter-attack here for Australia? Here's Nick Carley. UTS Olympic youngster. And the stop there by Vince Grillo allows Brazil some time to ponder ahead of midfield. Long range shot. And taken down was Adu, who cannot believe there is no penalty. A stinging effort by Marco Antonio. So what a finish to this match after Australia looked to have it all sealed up. Brazil will not lie down. Matuzalem. Adu. Offside. He was clearly in the position. And accordingly, the flag went up. Well, John. Well, you have to admire Brazil. This has been their best period in the two matches. The last 10, 15 minutes. The, the pressure has been enormous. The quality of their football. Just throwing the, the men forward, the skills coming out. They desperately need to get something out of this match. Galea, and there was an elbow there. Fernando Santos. So a much needed free kick to Australia just to settle things down. They certainly have been under siege in the last 10 minutes or so. And Tuzalov. It, looks, it appears that Australia is down to 10 men the way Brazil are playing. They have the Oli Roos rattled. Uh, player free down 
the flank. It's a, a more central ball played in by Methuselah. Alvin, who's got so lovely skills, but dispossessed there by Rizzo, who's had an outstanding second half. He alone has sparked many Australian moves. Russia, it's free now for Emerton, who's got some uh, great improvisation there. Kale gives it up in the end, the 16-year-old, to the Brazilian captain. He provides a long, attractive ball for Adu. And here's Rizzo with a panic to run in. And players in the middle too. This is dangerous size for Brazil, but uh, that touch just got away from him. And the Brazilians are allowed to push up as Marco Antonio caught offside there. Well, the pace is frenetic. It's amazing, isn't it, John, how much pressure that a team down to 10 men can uh, apply. Well, an earlier chance here by Adu, just fired the shot in, hit the underside of the crossbar, but uh, unfortunately for Brazil, the wrong side. Step around Russia. Perusian has been an important player in the second half. He's prepared to push up and attack. As Adu has to contend with Basa. Through he tries for Marco Antonio. Simon Colosimo has continued on his way in game two. procedure. Well, in the path.